it's Pete from Mindwise Mansworth Channel, aka Maverick Outdoors, and I'm out on a Thursday evening. It's coming up to 10 o'clock at night, and as you can see I'm doing a night paddle right in the middle of a wide bit of the River Thames. So it's very dark as you can see at the moment, but I'm now going to switch on to the fullest beam. 1100 lumens of my through night TC12. It's the front of the canoe. See some trees on the side of the river bank. And here's my left broadside as we look to the other side of the river. With a bit of a close up of the trees. So I've just finished paddling a little bit and just drifting. I can see the silhouettes of the trees to my left and right. And you can see the water is really still. And the sky also. There's hardly a cloud in the sky at all. But just sharing with you this little bit of a night paddle to get to my final basher destination for two days and uh, just explain why I'm out for the two days. But this is just so tranquil. You can get disorientated if you're not used to paddling in the dark because the shadows can sometimes sort of confuse and make you think the route's going one way when actually it's going another. Just sharing a little bit more calmness. 10 o'clock at night, out on the River Thames and I can see all the constellations of the stars. And on the surface of the water it is getting a little bit misty. Just going past some reeds and further right up there is my destination. So let's get a gentle paddle and using my head torch. So it's coming up to nearly 11 o'clock at night. So I've just mounted the canoe in the usual place at this pitch I've been to before. And of course there's all my kit. But I'll tell you, probably in the morning when I've set up my basher just over here from the canoe projecting alignment with it is going to be my footprint for my basher but I'm going to set up my shelter, have something to eat and uh, explain briefly what this video is about because it's a link mainly a link with some other videos that I've actually come out to do on this pitch to review some interesting kit and also some aspects of trail food. So good morning. For those that follow my travels will recognise this tarp pitch setup and location. I've fancied doing a nighttime paddle which I haven't done for quite a long time. Always good to sort of practice those skills. And my circumstances yesterday enabled me to arrange to do a nighttime paddle which I really wanted to do, which I hadn't done in a long time. 
and uh, then to spend the next two days, today's Friday and tomorrow Saturday, doing some reviews on a couple of bits of kit. One bit of kit that I've been using for quite a while that you heard me mention, which is a torch, and also two new bits of kit which I'm going to be reviewing fully on separate videos and utilising aspects of those two new bits of kit. And as you can see it's early morning, I've already got the day on the go, the kettle boiling, ready to put into an instant three-in-one coffee, just added a little bit of extra sugar. Just using the stall and the sit pad as a working surface. From previous outdoors activities, I've been using my little stick table, which is really convenient, sort of packed away, but I decided I wanted something a little bit more of a bigger surface area, so if you're out for a longer period of time and you've got things to do, hence got that Trekology little table there, but maybe more about that another time. But that folds up to about just under about a kilo in weight, it's about 0.95 I think it is. Now, after I'd set up the uh, basher tarp in the dark with uh, my head torch which the battery was starting to fade and uh, there was just enough light to see so I thought well I'm not going to make it really ultra bright I wanted to put the uh, tarp up, the shelter up in the dark and uh, with minimal light so for safety I could sort of see what I was doing but getting orientated so that was another thing as well sort of paddling here in the dark putting up the shelter in the dark it's all good sort of process to practice as well okay so what's going on with a gas cooker there <laughs> right well that you can see I've got some duct tape gaffer tape which I always carry a roll with me as you'd have seen in previous videos that I've brought up before and what I decided to do because it was very cold last night I mean the summer's starting to turn into the early stages of autumn hence I togged myself up a little bit more with what I slept in last night my homemade fleece uh, which is the first time I actually brought it out this season and then the body warmer over the top of it but underneath this fleece is a vest and another sort of day wear fleece, just a thin one. So I've got like two fleece materials, t-shirt underneath it, and then the body warmer, and then my two season Tropical Army sleeping bag, which as always just hooded over the end, and it just made that extra little bit of comfort, and I was really warm, and I'll tell you what, the body warmer made so much difference, keeping all the internal organs warm which then sort of has a resonating effect to the rest of your body to actually keep that warm as well. So, yeah, all good stuff. I had a really good night's sleep last night on my two stuck together with gaffer tape inflatable 1.2 metre self-inflating mat. So I had about a two inch surface to actually lie on last night that was padded, so that was comfortable. And my softy trousers over my cargo trousers which sort of similar, these trousers are sort of a similar type of, although the surf, outer surface material is different, it's a bit like the softy trousers and the softy jacket, which I didn't wear this time, due to having the body warm and the fleece and what have you. Um, it's a bit like sort of the sleeping bag, but in trouser form. But returning to the gas container, as you probably know, all sort of fuels, when they're cold, take longer to ignite, uh, depending on what the fuel source is. But of course, the gas container was getting cold last night, so I just wanted to improvise. It was nothing sort of over technical. I just thought, right, just to make that a little bit more efficient on the burner for the gas to ignite and it to be more efficient with its use. You probably recognise <laughs> this is a used MRE meal ready to eat flameless ration heater package which has been used and obviously the um, element is still inside so they're used and I got had two of those because I knocked up last night. One of the flameless ration heaters I used to heat up a chicken and mushroom in pasta creamy sauce meal in one of the MRE sachets and then also um, a dessert. So of course I had 
those two left over. So I thought, well, if they can just take a slight little bit of cold because, of course, the gas canister is metal and it did feel cold to the touch. So I thought, well, if I just wrap those round, it's going to at least sort of reduce the coldness a little bit. And, uh, yeah, I think it did actually make a difference. So it's better to have used it than not to at least know that there was some little bit more efficiency within the usage of that gas burner. Yeah, you can make insulating sleeves with um, thermo insulation that's used in the building trade, but I didn't have that with me. I also could have used maybe. You can use anything really, as long as you're safe with it and keep it well away from the burner so it's not going to combust. But I could have used my perspiration cloth and wrapped that round it and what have you, but I thought, well then, I want to use it for perspiration cloth if I get a bit more active out in the canoe later on. So hence, just using that, just a bit of improvisation, and as I say, I know that did the job. So I'm here for a few days, basically just for a little bit of a chill zone. And also to then make some separate videos on these three bits of kit. The TC12 torch, which I've been using for, well, since the early part of 2017. So I've been using this for a good, well, I'd say about seven, eight months. Um, it's USB chargeable. I did actually feature it and include it in a wild camp that I did. The early part of this year, 2017, it might have been February, March time, although I'd been actually utilising the torch before that. But I thought I'd do a separate video just to sort of highlight some of the more in-depth spec and how the actual torch works. But the two other bits of kit, this new solar panel, which I'm very impressed with, it's a new updated model of the Blitzwolf version of a solar panel and another separate video on this survival baton utility stick which is sectional it comes in three parts but of course makes that baton and it's made out of very good quality metal and inside the tubing are three different tools cutting device knife gaffer for fishing that sort of thing so um, all will be revealed in the separate video to do with the survival baton utility stick i'm quite impressed with it so far but in the video you'll actually see it in action as well if there's anything um, you know that's around that's of interest then i'll include it in this video i'm not going to incorporate aspects of how i set up the shelter you know the structure of it which is the 8x12 which I've used a few times before. So during the time of making the three separate videos on those three items, which will be uploaded to Mind Wise Man um, at a later date, uh, if there's anything of interest which is different from usual, then I'll actually include it in uh, the time that I'm actually spending here to include in this actual video. So on this nice calm Friday morning, Brew's cooled down a little bit. Oh, that was a flurry of geese just flying off from the surface of the water in the background. <laughs> so you heard that, but you couldn't see it. But I'm now just going to have this little refreshment and then get the day on the go. So first little bit of routine, just airing my sleep clothes. I mean, they're not all sort of musky and sweaty and everything because it was quite a cool night last night. So, you know, there was no perspiration involved or anything. But, you know, the weather's nice. It's a nice cool breeze. So I might as well wear them because I'm going to be wearing them again tonight for my second night. But let's just go back into the shelter. Just a little tip. Uh, nothing really technical, but just something I thought of last night. I brought a black small bin bag for my rubbish, but what I did, I got two of the ends, or sorry, I say the edges rather, and made two ends, tied a knot, but you can see actually I've done it here. And it's created a sort of a loop where my fingers are through, and then I can just hang it on the tightening device for the basher pole, and that's my rubbish area. 
I'll probably go into the Trackology little folding aluminium table at a later date. But what I do like about it is not only is it really strong, it can take up to, I think it's uh, 25 kilos in weight. Obviously you've got to be careful, but it's nice and sturdy. It's got a nice lot of space, as you can see, for one, two, maybe three people. But for me, I mean, I'm sport for choice, what I want to do with it. But what I do like is, let me just pop that on top there, just get that out of the way. It's all balanced, as you can see. But because there's little slats, I can, at a later date, if I want something to loop over the edge and actually have hanging down, so that actually creates the potential to do that. Again, I don't know what I would do, but I just thought it's um, it's quite a practical sort of shape and design to have maybe utensils hanging down if this was going to be in a permanent position. But that depends, obviously, if you're going to be moving the table around because obviously it's so practical to be able to do that and being lightweight. Uh, you don't want things sort of dangling around, falling off and sort of rattling about. But uh, that's the thing I like about it and I just thought just my sort of mindset of thinking how can I improvise something is that as well. But there's also something else. As you can see I've set up the toaster to go on top of the camping stove but you can see I've also put the wind guard around it and where these little staff protrusions dig into the ground if your cooking space was located on a ground level obviously those spikes will go in either side the other one this side what I've done is I actually put them so they're just protruding through the gap of the two slats which makes it stable enough to adjust for whatever width diameter or shape you've got going on top of the gas stove like the kettle so it's still protected and efficient with fuel use being least affected by any cross breeze uh, by working on a nice table level so all good stuff so I'm now going to make breakfast, just for convenience, put an all-day breakfast sachet MRE in this flameless ration heater pouch, add a little bit of water, put it in that box, wrap it in that kneeling mat for extra insulation whilst the toast is on the go and then I'll make a brew. So that'll be my breakfast for this morning. To get the calories so I can do my review videos but at the moment, when the sun comes through the trees and the sound of the aircraft in the background, as you can hear, <laughs> bit of a dynamic sound effect, really. The sun cascades through the trees and uh, lights up the solar panel to recharge my phone, which is in the little compartment just at the side there. Got my stainless steel plate with me today for convenience. Just put toast in any other sundries when I'm cooking or eating. And actually, this is a cooker hob cover for cooker rings. You turn it upside down, obviously that's the right way round, and you place it on top of the ring to protect it. So I bought a set of these. I think they have, I've included these before. I haven't used this for a long time, but I've included uh, this before in or oh, wild camp. Must have been last year sometime, um, where I just improvised and thought, well, I want a stainless steel plate. I don't want to pay the earth for it. This is nice and sturdy and does the job and as I say it's a cooker hob cover. What I decided to do considering that the uh, little gas cooker it's not as efficient as maybe my common 533 to do toast so what I did I just skewered it with a fork and then just hold, held it nearer holding it just sort of gauging how much it's toasting and it might toast much quicker. So here we go I'm ready to apply some butter to the toast and spread it with that little convenient lightweight knife. using the bag that the toaster frame was in, just as a little bit of insulation from the heat from the bag of the all day breakfast, so bon appetit. So, as you can see I'm wearing my homemade smock and also army issue lightweight cargo trousers that were given to me by a friend of mine who's in the military police 
and they were originally MTP, the lighter shade of camo that's normal issued to the British military. And I got a dark green dry dye mixture that comes in a sachet about that big that you mix with cold water. And it takes about 45 minutes stirring it around to change the sort of military look to them, which I've mentioned before. Helps to dampen down the sort of military look, albeit you've still got the sort of camo type effect, but being a bit more sort of like urban domestic within the colour. And the material being 70% cotton, 30% polyester on these particular ones, some are 65, 35 polyester. Um, it makes the cold water dye, which tends not to be that effective with a lot of synthetic material, although it doesn't make it as dark as the colour that you choose. So if you had like maroon red and you dyed a material that was synthetic like polyester, it would probably be less of a dark red, the same as this dark green dye I use for these trousers. These trousers haven't come out as dark a green as if they'd been 100% cotton, but at least it gives the desired effect that I wanted within the shade, which as I say makes the uh, colouring a little bit more subtle and appropriate for outdoors wearing. And I do have another pair that I've worn before in many outdoors activities. Uh, which are the same type of trousers, same colour, but I actually dyed them black and they are 65 cotton and 35 polyester and it was the same effect, it just made the colours more drab but um, I would say grateful to be given these a couple of weeks ago so he said, you know, you're into sort of outdoors activities and I've seen some of the clothing you use, could these be of use to you? and uh, so of course I was really grateful and uh, hence donning them for the first time outdoors on this occasion so being out from Thursday last night, the night paddle, pitching up my tarp and then having the MRE in a pouch, the chicken, mushroom, pasta and creamy sauce, and then the tub of strawberries, which was really nice. That was one meal. Then of course breakfast that I had a little while ago so being out for nearly two and a half days, you know, you've got three meals a day. So my second meal later on will be these quarter pounder Roseville burgers. And then I'll either have that with the grilled sweet corn or buttered potatoes. Or maybe if I'm that hungry, I'll probably have the buttered potatoes and the burgers and then the sweet corn later on as supper. Then of course I've got another meal to have sometime, maybe later on, so that'll probably be a snack. And that could be what I've brought out before but didn't consume it, so I might consume it now uh, on this little trip. Is a tuna salad in a long life uh, container. And then this little tub of squid in garlic. Then I've got breakfast tomorrow, which is two eggs, and then some herrings in a pepper and uh, sort of tomatoey type sauce and some beans. So it'll be a mixture of that or a couple of them. Then of course some desserts there, some mandarins and some peaches in a pot. Biscuit box, then next to that are two brew containers, drink containers. In there is the tea bags, the all-in-one coffees and the sugar. And then in this one, smaller one, I made a concoction of a really good quality hot chocolate powder and also a new little discovery I've found a powdered peanut butter drink which is really nice came across it by chance the other week so I made a sort of half and half concoction in that small container and knocked up a portion of that last night before I went to sleep so that was pretty pucker spot on tinned milk long life milk which I've decanted out of the can and put in that container for the rest of the few days and then in that box was the bread for the toast and there's another slice in there cut in half, easier to put in the box, which I'll toast tomorrow and have with a breakfast. And then just there are two MREs, one's a lamb casserole and one's a lamb rogan josh. So I might mix the two together. I mean, if you fancy, you know, if you go to a restaurant, you're gonna have three courses and that is, uh, you know, is my restaurant portion, so to speak, <laughs> in a great outdoors, Basher Bistro Riverbank style. Salt and pepper in that rectangular container in either end, one dispenses 
the uh, sea salt, the other dispenses, ground black pepper, tomato sauce and of course a little bottle of oil. So all in all, you know, that's uh, normal consumption of food that you'd probably have if you were at home anyway. And uh, that's going to last me until late Saturday. But just also just back to the MREs and the potatoes, you know, I've got a variety there. I could even add some of the potatoes if I had the sweet corn and the veal burgers. Um, if there was a few potatoes left over or didn't use any of them at all, I could either add them to one of those MREs if I didn't actually have them both together. And those two can either be boiled in water in the uh, saucepan billy can or else I can just empty them out and heat them up actually in the saucepan. So I'm not necessarily going to sort of feature the aspects of knocking up all these meals on this uh, little outing, albeit if I do individualise any aspects of, you know, knocking up the food and it's a little bit different, I'll upload it onto my other channel, Maverick Meals to the Max. Which is quite handy for people that are interested in trail food where it can be sort of like specifically uh, featured without actually having to go back to a main video. And that channel I formulated the early part of this year and it's been quite handy for a lot of people that are into sort of trail food, been a bit creative and imaginative, um, where I've actually specified and individualised certain aspects of meals that I've cooked when I've been wild camping, doing other things, but actually highlighted them with other um, recipes and food ideas that may not actually be included when I'm doing something like this outdoors. Oh yeah, and must remember any sort of dairy products, the butter, keeping the shade out of any sort of warmth and what have you and the same with the meat as well just the same as the old days before anyone had fridges and freezers you'd have to try and keep them in the coolest place possible and you're just applying that principle really when you're outdoors simple as that and a really quick example I've just noticed actually these MREs the lamb casserole and the lamb curry uh, the containers are really cold so, obviously, because you know the, it's not that warm a day, so what I've done is I've put one of them either side of the meat burgers, which again will um, really contribute to stopping them from perishing, even though I'm actually going to eat them today, so there won't be any problem with that at all. So, I've finished doing two of the reviews the um, survival baton, and just a recap and a bit more extra spec on the through night TC12. Uh, then it started to get a bit overcast, and we had some rain. So I adjusted the tarp and uh, wanted to do the review on the solar panel a little bit more with more clear daylight and sun. Uh, that will be prospect for tomorrow morning. So just a quick uh, tally on the tarp. Due to the rain, I was getting a little bit of pooling along this edge. It was just the natural weight of the water sort of creating a bit of a gully here and then overflowed and dripped. And there was a bit of a drip line here which sort of splashed a little bit near to the end of my head end of the tarp when I was having a chill laying on the folded mat. So from that tree, I've just bungeed it and brought this midsection of the broadside a little bit higher so I've got that sort of shape to it. A little bit higher so I've got a fall coming down either side of that little apex so the drainage is well away from my main bit of space and I also did the same the other side. So you can see from the centre point of the ridge coming down to that point there I just took this this part of the broadside up just a little bit higher so again I've got a little bit of fall going down that way and also coming down this way. So it isn't prospect to rain that hard even though we might have a little bit of a shower later on this evening when it gets dark and maybe during the night but there's nothing where it's going to be sort of gusty winds or really heavy downpours so that will do the job but as I've said before if it was a problem the profile would be lowered down at least halfway and making it readjusted so there was no ingress either side of any splash from any drainage from the top of the tarp. I've just collected up some wood that I'd stashed away. I'm not worried about separating it into different gauges. I'm just going to make a pile of it because all I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the firebox just once today and I'm going to do the uh, veal burgers and the sweet corn and maybe boil up some potatoes on it. But what I want to do is share with you, look at that golden colour just cascading into my basher and the sun as it's going to the west. Look at that. <laughs> it's like studio lighting. Look at that quality. Absolutely brilliant. 
sun cascading and I think I'm going to have this until it actually goes down and properly sets in about an hour to an hour and a half's time because as I look up through the trees the sky is blue. So I've got the sweet corn and the veal. Quarter pound is strategically placed ready to go on that grill. And the firebox has started roaring. Ready to get dinner on the go. So it started to rain a little bit earlier than anticipated. So I brought the firebox inside, just underneath the apex. And so the corn on the cob doesn't actually burn, I've wrapped it in foil. I've mentioned before I don't like using foil, only as a last resort for convenience, like putting jacket spuds, potatoes in the coals of a fire, that sort of thing. But I very seldom use any sort of aluminium cooking equipment. But that's just convenient. For the corn on the cob, I'll just roll over on the grid as the flames round about, keep them about regulated round about that, that heat so it doesn't sort of over scorch. Hopefully they'll just cook through nice and evenly, but I'll turn those round a few times. And I think I'll eat those separate and then I'll have the burgers. And I don't want the cob overheating. Otherwise it will turn into popcorn, I had a couple of pops <laughs> from the, uh, just I think at the end of the husk of the cobs where obviously they're more susceptible to the direct flame but a few little pops and cracks and it's definitely not the wood burning making the noise, it's definitely the sweet corn So that's the sweet corn just soft Heard them sizzling in the foil from sort of like start to finish turning them around with my heavy duty gloves, just sort of turning them and that. Took about just 10 minutes. So I'm going to douche them with some butter and then sprinkle some pepper. And then by that time they'll have cooled down a little bit so at least I can hold them by the end of the cob. But meanwhile, first some burger is starting to cook from the heat that's already on that grill plate but I'll add some smaller fuel in a moment. So just there's some little flames just coming up to underneath the grill so it doesn't actually swamp it and cook it or burn it. So that's the sweet corn eating. That was really nice. Just cooked just right. Tender, juicy, a little bit crisp. And now I've got the burger to eat. And I'll get the firebox going again in a moment and uh, put the other one on. So the second burger, I just douche with a little bit of tomato sauce and I'm just basically taking bites of it whilst it's impaled with a fork. And then just keeping the firebox going, just start to build up again to make a brew. So what I've decided to do whilst having a little bit of a flash of inspiration drinking my hot chocolate peanut drink there in the mug really nice and creamy silky smooth anyway uh, back to the potatoes which is what I've decided to do is I've taken three I'm keeping the firebox going just for a little bit of cozy warmth as the temperatures dropped a little bit so I'll get that going again in a moment with a little bit more flame boiling up some water and then cut some potatoes so they're cooked and then I'll put them in one of the other containers that I had the strawberries in which will protect them once they've cooled down and then I'll have those with my breakfast tomorrow so I think I'll have buttered potatoes that are already cooked I'll just flash fry them in some butter and a little bit of oil with two eggs and a tin of beans so the rain now has subsided it's very still now except for the dripping of the water from the upper crown of the trees coming in and onto the lower leaves. So uh, yeah, it's nice and tranquil. But I'm now standing where I normally have my chill hammock looking into the open end entrance of my basher. And you can see the firebox, just that little glow. But I'm now just gonna project the uh, TC12 straight onto my basher. And 
just to see how the water's boiling. Ready to put those smaller cut potatoes into the boiling water and then I can saute those because they'll be pre-cooked. All I've got to do is heat them through like saute potatoes just in case I decide not to actually get the firebox going and it's all going to be very simply done on the gas single stove burner. So as I say, doing the potatoes, just boiling through, ready for tomorrow. Just economy of time, they're going to be ready for tomorrow. And of course I changed my mind after having the food on display earlier on and just showing you what I was going to have over the sort of two and a half, three days being out. Just suddenly thought, well I'll use the potatoes, actually I really fancy them for breakfast tomorrow with the beans and the egg. And plus as well, I've got a bit of nice ambient light and warmth whereby I'll finish off the wood that I've got left so I've got about another half hour 45 minutes once the potatoes are done of a little bit of firebox coziness warmth and uh, then I think that'll be me settling for the night So that was the misty morning star about seven o'clock this morning and uh, now it's sort of later on during the day I had the brunchy breakfast which I'm officially calling breakfast in a box <laughs> which was the uh, potatoes that I prepped last night for convenience and then sauteed them and then had it with egg and beans but uh, if you want to see how that turned out then check out Maverick Meals to the Max and that recipe titled brunch in a box uh, you can actually just see the simplicity of how I sort of improvised and amended things as I went along through the process of actually making the breakfast itself so the sun is cascading right on top of my basher in the open space my sort of chill zone aircraft going over a few private aircraft as well been flying around because it's a decent weather day appropriate to fly private planes and that sort of thing And as the plane goes off into the distance, so will I be very soon. So the objective of this video was just to share with you the nighttime paddle and then just uh, setting up the basher, just a little bit of food and then explaining the, the reason why I came out for the two days or two nights, three days was to uh, do a few reviews on this location and in real time to actually using those bits of kit. So as you can see, I already tidied up a little bit. Be packing other stuff away in a little while and just taking a pew as usual, my little fold up stool and uh, just savouring as always light cascading through the trees and once this video goes live on the channel then uh, a little while afterwards maybe about within the following week look at the date when this video has been uploaded and within the following week you can see the other three reviews um, will be done in sort of chronological order probably the torch first then the survival baton and then the solar panel which I'm going to rig up in a little while and stick it where the sun is actually shining up there somewhere and recharge my battery of the phone just for a little bit whilst making myself a brew before I make my way back on the rivers and back to put in via my old faithful maverick explorer 
So it's just out to share the experience as always, nothing over technical and I uh, hope you deemed some interest and really just giving you a point of reference, the reason why I came out was actually do a review on some items, some bits of kit. I tend not to do sort of unboxings and review, tabletop reviews, that sort of thing. I prefer to be out in the field and actually using the items. But this time I thought I'd just sort of specify them a little bit more in depth with separate videos so it makes it a little bit more of a focal point for people that are interested in those items. So my final parting words are thanks for watching, appreciate your interest and catch you another video soon. Cheers, take care.